From California State University, San Bernardino, it's Local Matters. Enrollment freeze and professional skateboarding. Hello, I'm Donna Truhella and welcome to Local Matters featuring stories from across the Inland Empire. And I'm Carly Nicola. Beginning spring 2013, the CSU system will begin freezing its enrollment. Reporter Yutunde Susan Kimmy gauges student reaction. Students and faculty have been greatly affected by the CSU enrollment freeze. I think that it's unfortunate that a lot of students are going to be left out um, for the spring quarter because, um, you know, a lot of people have to take a quarter off to work and then come back in for during the spring and it's like they're not able to do that anymore. According to CSU Mentor, only eight campuses including Fullerton and San Bernardino will continue their open enrollment, but only to transfer students. Well, I'm planning on transferring to another CSU, Cal Poly, Cal Poly Pomona. And I don't know whether or not it, it will affect me since I'm already a CSU student. But if it does, then it's going to make it really difficult for me to graduate. CSUSB admissions counselor Michael Harrison gives a deeper insight on enrollment. Well, Cal State San Bernardino has declared impaction. Uh, we've been impacted for the last, I want to say, um, two years or so. Uh, we've been impacted, and basically what that means is that uh, the university receives more applications than can admit. So the admissions criteria um, has been adjusted uh, for certain um, community colleges, high schools um, that are applying to the university. In other words, non-local students will have more requirements to enter a CSU campus than local students. For Local Matters, I'm Yetunde Susan Kemi. Reporter Taylor Ruthford spent the day with professional skateboarder Mike White to learn how he's turned his longtime hobby into a career. For some, skateboarding is just a hobby, but for others, it's a way of life. Mike White is an up-and-coming amateur skateboarder who has recently broken into the mainstream culture of skateboarding. I spoke with him about his talents and how long it took to get to where he's at. I started when I was like about to turn 14. Rounded off like probably 10 or 12 years, something like that. Mike is turning professional for some of the most prestigious skateboarding companies. I ride for um, Baker Skateboards, um, Shake Joint, Crew and Supra, and then Pharmacy, of course. Skateboarding becomes a lifestyle for those who want to make it in the industry. It's a long and constant process that takes time and help from others. Yeah, pretty much. I think for any skater, it's essential to have a skateboard shop backing you because they're the ones kind of putting you out there in the eye of the people that actually can do something for you. Me, skateboarding, my lifestyle is just, I don't know, I kind of run my day-to-day my -day off of it, you know. I work at the skateboard shop, it's all I do. Skateboarding is a hard sport to get recognized in and to even pursue. So for those looking to make this a career, the statistics are not on your side. Small percentages, dude, it's, yeah, I think it's pretty safe to say that that's a small percentage of kids that actually skateboard that are ripping, that are actually going to get noticed and become Dan Margera or Ryan Sheckler or whatever. So the next time you see a skateboarder, look twice, because he might be the next big thing. For Local Matters, I'm Taylor Ruthford. That's all we have for now. I'm Carly Nicola. And I'm Donna Truhella. Join us next time for more local stories that matter.